I'm 35 years old. I, I don't have a family. I've never been married. I don't have kids. My my life really sucked before I did Unite the Right. <laughs> You don't wake up one morning and say, I don't want to be a white nationalist anymore. Homegrown extremism has been on the rise for the past decade. And one group has become the most deadly, far right wing extremists. Since 9-11, they've been responsible for 73% of deaths in violent extremist cases. 12 people who have been shot. A reported gunman on the loose. A horrifying scene in Charlottesville. The Anti-Defamation League counted 50 extremist-related murders in 2018 and said, every single extremist killing from Pittsburgh to Parkland had a link to right-wing extremism. But in 2017, the Trump administration stripped funding from key groups, helping right-wing extremists leave their movements. Instead, money was redirected towards things like law enforcement. So if homegrown extremism is a major issue, but fewer programs now exist to fight it, is anyone stepping in? This is Jesse Morton. He's a former Al-Qaeda recruiter who was sentenced to more than 11 years in prison for operating a radical Islamic website that made violent threats. How's it going? Good, Good to see you. you. Now, he's on a mission to help members of radical organizations step away, ideally before they commit violence. We think it's worthwhile to talk to him, even if it means that um, uh, he still holds controversial views. I'm not a bad person, and I don't want to be mean to other people. Whether that's a white person, a black person, a Jewish person, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, let's back up. That's Jason Kessler. He was involved in organizing that. You will not replace us! One of the most hate-filled rallies of our generation, which happened in Charlottesville two summers ago. I'm forever going to be the symbol of, like, David Duke 2.0. We're meeting at Jesse's apartment in a location outside of Washington, D.C. It's where he runs his small nonprofit, Parallel Networks. Jesse and Jason have been talking for months. What do you hope to accomplish from your conversation with Jason today? We're here for him to help him facilitate his exit in the event that he wants to do so. We are under no delusions about the fact that that might not work out well. Jason has indications that he could go either way. But if he doesn't have support, and if he doesn't have an alternative network to get embedded in, he's not going to make that transition. The Charlottesville Police Department told me that Jason was never arrested on charges related to the rally itself. But he is involved in a number of civil lawsuits tied to that day. I think most people might identify this type of work to be typically conducted by law enforcement rather than under the bucket of social work. How do you think about that? Well, there would be no way to do an interdiction on Jason with regard to law enforcement because he hasn't broken the law. Hey. Hey, how are you? Good. They go on to have a lengthy conversation. It's full of twists and turns. It gets political. I am not going to back dialogue that allows racially motivated activism, a white civil rights well, platform. So, so do you have a problem it. with uh, Black Lives Matter? Do you think Black Lives Matter should be dismantled because that's racial? Advocacy? And at times, personal too. I've been in your shoes. I've been in your shoes. And at the end of the day, when I had time to actually exit, take a breath, and stop, I came out and I realized it was my traumas manifested outside of myself. I didn't want to deal Jason with Jason says he's ready to de-radicalize, but it's clear that doesn't happen overnight. I, I do believe in what I'm saying, and it's the only reason that I put up with as much as I have so far. If white people aren't allowed to talk about the issues that concern them... I cannot accept the idea that white people are not allowed to express their views, because it's not true. I don't think that the Unite the Right rally was part of the solution. I do think that it exacerbated and made things worse. This has been a very messy struggle for me to understand the racial landscape. Do you think you've changed since the 2017 rally in Charlottesville? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that I have my own um, emotional issues as a human being that have exacerbated my problems, you know, like uh, seeing people attack me and then I feel like I have to attack back and it just creates this cycle of negativity and anger and hate. You don't identify as a white supremacist? Definitely not, no. Neo-Nazi? No. Alt-right? No. What do you identify yourself as? <sighs> I'm just a person. I consider myself a civil rights advocate. But when you 
are one of the organizers that brings together the largest gathering of white supremacists in a generation. Mm -hmm. Can you see how people make those assumptions? I promoted something which is not good for America. I gave a platform to some very bad people, and I realize that now. After digesting the conversation between Jesse and Jason, I called up Mitch Silber, the former director of intelligence for the NYPD. His team actually used to track Jesse when he was active. But now, the two of them work together. How do you distinguish between someone who is an extremist or someone who's just angry about stuff and is talking about stuff online? It's very difficult, and frankly, that is the job primarily of the intelligence analyst. It's very difficult to be able to discern who will make that turn to violence and who's just venting. With Kessler, don't think he's going to carry out a violent act, but things that he says, things that he's um, talked about, you know, might instigate, motivate, mobilize someone to cross the line into violence. Government funding or not, Jesse vows to keep talking to Jason. If anything, to make sure that he's never involved in something like Charlottesville ever again. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.